humans are becoming alarmed at the implications of plastic in the watershed. Degraded plastic chips become confused for food by birds, fishes, and turtles, compromising the ocean's food web. The scenario can lead to intersects in marine species. Efforts are afoot to contain the debris by savvy watershed stewards like Lenny Arkenstall. The state of the art of trash collection has improved, but the debris continues to be removed to a public works landfill. However, plastic waste could be considered a commodity with value based on a new technology recently demonstrated at the Electric Lodge in Venice, California. When he finds out his collected trash can be converted back to light crude oil, demonstrating the cradle-to-cradle -cradle concept. Harry Sato of E-Energy explains how this revolutionary technology works. This machine is strictly a, a demo, not to be confused with the commercial uh, unit because this will only process the amount of plastic we put into this little chamber. This chamber is merely a melting pot. It will go up to about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. And at that point, the plastic has already gasified. That tube going in here, gas is coming in and it bubbles up through the water. The only reason why we have water in this particular device is because the water represents the, the cooling device. The regular machines would have a chiller and you wouldn't have water. So our output kind of gets mixed with water. This is merely a, heat, a heating chamber. It's broken up into two sections. There's a lower section and an upper section. And the, and the temperature I have set for the upper section is 420 degree, degrees C and the bottom is 440 degrees C, which would equate to about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. As the plastic melts, the chambers heat up and all the residual gets to the point where they gasify. It comes out, it'll come down in bubble form, show up right here on the surface. And as this plastic melts and turns into a gaseous form, and comes out through this tube, you'll actually see a film of oil uh, developing on the top side of this water and it will accumulate. In order to process plastic, one must granulize it into about the uh, size of pea gravels. And you shove it into this uh, hopper, it goes into a auger driven device that heats it the heated plastic will go in here to be um, uh, gasified and then the gases come off into this third area here. So we have heating, or oh, sorry, liquefying, gassing, and then at this point it breaks down into the various elements. If you, you know, Google it, you find out that a, a gallon of uh, gasoline or, or diesel oil or anything like that is very close to eight pounds. And so if you're putting eight pounds of product in, you're getting eight pounds or almost eight pounds of product out. That speaks very well to the efficiency of the unit. L low density polyethylene, high density polyethylene, uh, polypropylene and polystyrene. These four types of plastic actually float, which works out very well for our purposes the types of plastic we're interested in processing are the ones that we're going to be able to find floating by themselves on the surface. Uh, there are movements in numerous cities around the state of California to um, have plastic bag bans and polystyrene uh, food service container bans. Um, the Surfrider Foundation up in Santa Cruz, uh, our cameraman over here, Dustin uh, McDonald, was president of Surfrider Foundation and they got together with uh, folks in the community and managed to get a styrofoam food container ban going on in our community now. And it really is amazing when we do beach cleanups. A few years ago, um, styrofoam food service stuff was, was definitely a big part of it. And now it really is a very small part of the, uh, of the beach cleanup stuff. So those, these bans do work. 
it, we don't want to use chlorinated um, types of uh, plastics, uh, PVC, polyvinyl chloride. Nylon is made with chlorine as well because they do produce uh, a toxic um, effluent, you know, it produces a dioxin. Anytime you, you give people the freedom to do something and you say, hey, you know what, remember, don't put PVC in there, <laughs> how are you going to keep them from doing that? And dioxin is such a huge, huge problem. So there's a real education need to keep people who are, you know, want to do the right thing from making an honest mistake. We're just at the beginning of this process. We're learning every day and, and um, so many different organizations and groups and factors in our life have specific needs to have a technology like this, it's gonna skyrocket. You know, I, I, I think that there's going to be a lot more um, thought process put into this sort of a thing and, and it's just you know bound to get better, cheaper, faster, all that sort of thing. I'm wondering what type of scale up plans for the future, because I agree with you, Homer, mm -hmm. that this is in its infancy. Absolutely. And that ten years from now we may be going, wow, this is a this is a solution we've been looking for for a long time. That's what we've got our fingers crossed, exactly. So I'm just curious as to where you think that could go and how we could all work together to try to make that happen. Years ago talking about plastics, people thought, you know, you're from outer space, what are you talking about? This, what's the problem? And now, like we say, it's in it's a trendy topic of conversation in a, in a Hollywood uh, cocktail party. It's, it's the buzz. Help us create that buzz. The, the more that people are talking about it, the more they'll ask these questions, the more that money will come toward working on the solutions for it. Is it a step forward? I really firmly believe it is. You know, no matter how we utilize it, it's opening up conversation and, and that's always a positive. One of the key factors that really reduces plastic waste is putting uh, a price tag on it. You know, if you bring me a, a pound of plastic, I'll probably be able to pay you 25 cents and then I get 25 cents worth, you know, in product uh, out of it once we process it. Mm -hmm. You know, at $4 a gallon, uh, 50 cents a pound is about the going rate for the plastic. That that's kind of boils down to its value. So that's a huge step.